we'll get a sip. I'll be back. listening to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I don't know what you would, well, I would call it music, um, kind of like if Blade Runner was a good, um, a happy movie or a good movie kind of thing. Like it's got that kind of uh, vibe to it, but it's not, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's very tranquil. <sighs> um, what the hell am I doing here with this video? Um, yeah, it's got a lot to do with, well, a lot of things, really. I've just um, I've been trying to figure out a way of, um, well, like for all the sides, like they're, like, you know, not just the, uh, the grand strategy for the Entente and the Central Powers, but like for each little, um, well, each, you know, you know what I mean, for each uh, part. And the Russians, I'm like, it's also tying in historically. I'm like, what do what are they doing right now? Um, you know, they've signed a non-aggression pact, which was obviously in, like really good for them due to the fact that uh, they're not doing very well over here. Um, doing, you know, not too bad here, and you know, obviously bad here. But overall, I mean, they've got a. The last thing they need right now is a, a, another few fronts to open up. Um, so that's given them, you know, maybe some breathing space and so on and so forth. But I mean, they've got to be trustworthy. They've got a skeleton crew up in uh, the Caucasus. It's ridiculous. Um, I'm going with it. And I also have to deal with um, the fact that since I am dealing with uh, going with it, if I decide to change course, which is also another thing I've been looking at with the Ottomans, they did want to change course. The Germans agreed with them. Uh, from what I've been reading of like not focusing on the Caucasus and starting to go towards Palestine, but it was too late. Not for me, because uh, my timeline is different. Uh, it's weird to say timeline. I was starting to think about it this week because I was like, okay, how do I start? And it just it just appeared. I was like, um, yeah, this is a different timeline rather than I was always like, okay, historically versus my, I'm like, no, this is, you know, this is the timeline now. It's changed uh, enough. Because uh, I'm trying to always figure out like what has changed. Uh, even uh, you know, uh, Manny and Mike was reiterating it that way, um, or re-emphasizing like you know, okay, hold on here before I make any decisions. I I need to know what the hell is going on uh, historically, you know, and, and what has changed, uh, altered because of your game and that type of stuff. Um, so what I'm looking at is uh, just thinking about the Hindenburg Line and what the heck they're trying to what these guys want to do and what is feasible later on for uh, look uh, we'll get into that later hopefully tomorrow with the, or tomorrow it's uh oh my god it's today actually it's midnight right now when i'm doing this i should be asleep but uh i don't know what the hell's going on um yeah so i'm looking at the russians grand strategy wise because remember everything's going to change or get into proper january 1st uh, 1915 in my timeline um I think what they want to do is uh, legitimize uh, themselves um, towards their own people and towards their allies and towards the, uh, obviously, towards their enemy. Um, put fear back into them. Um, essentially, that's it. So the grand strategy is, well, we're going to try to not give up any of this territory and reclaim everything here. Um, and I think partially that's going to be done due to the fact that, uh, you know, a majority of the forces, uh, like I said, from the Caucasus and that, uh, what I call the big adjustment, that's going to be a, like, I was trying to figure out the scenarios versus the grand campaign and what makes sense uh, because I'm not going to be doing the resource calculation and all that stuff until January 1st, 1915. And I'm using... I'm extrapolating from uh, the Christmas truce to the December truce where all the uh, nations kind of like take stock and go, what the hell? Um, like, what direction do we want to go to? Uh, do we see this a long-term thing? Remember, there's going to be, I mean, historically, like in my timeline, it's the same thing. Um, 
you know, there's multiple layers. There's other people I could see far ahead and are starting to go. They may not have a very large voice compared to other people that are, you know, uh, are very um, narrow sighted. Um, uh, you know, there's some people that can see it far, far. Oh, my God. I can't wait to see uh, There's a, uh, I'm sorry, side notes, whatever. I found a lecture that's called uh, Kitchener's um, Influence on the War in Africa in war, uh, uh, World War One. There's a lecture on that. I'm like, what? <laughs> Anyways, um, so that's what I'm trying to do here is trying to figure out grand strategy wise. How can the Russians fulfill that uh, thing? Um, that's it, really. Um, uh, for me, I'm hoping that uh, the Entente, the other uh, members of the Entente can see this is not being a sign of weakness by the Russians uh, with the non-aggression pact. I want them to see it as um, uh, a cry for help or uh, look. Uh, and for me, remember, this has been, always been my focus and it's always going to be, as far as I know, unless something changes. Um, this is going to be uh, instrumental um, uh, for the Entente. I think this could be uh, uh, the weak point for the Central Powers. I don't know. Uh, in my timeline, we'll see. Um, uh, they're still got, they, they've got issues, obviously, with the naval blockade and uh, resource management issues and so on and so forth. Um, but, and it's difficult, man, uh, to try to keep out hindsight type things. Uh, I've, I try to uh, justify it sometimes, like I said, of being the quieter voices that can see far ahead. I'm like, well, maybe there's somebody, who, you know, even with the, uh, the Russians here trying to figure out like some kind of pseudo um, version of the Hindenburg line. Maybe there's another way, like uh, they say in the rules, like you, you should stay in the, you know, the spirit of the whatever's. I'm like, well, if I'm playing the grand campaign in a different timeline, screw you. I want to figure out ways of maybe there's, um, doesn't mean I'm saying use the same rules as the 1914 trench rules. You want to have a secondary line of trenches? Fine. You have to use the 1914 versions until those other terrain effect type things come into play uh, later on, uh, whatever. Like I said, I've got a long way to go, man. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I think I mentioned this to Mini Warmut. Um, it's weird. Uh, I, uh, I'm glad I mentioned it, it to him last night because, um, I've said it over and over again and on an odd way, uh, when Mandry Mike was mentioning about, uh, not looking at, um, the outcome or the end, you know, it, it's, uh, it's the journey. I mean, it's difficult because sometimes it's just like, I just want to, you know, get to the next, uh, you want to see the action sequence. You want to get rid of the commercials. Um, uh, the thing is this, 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 this is so freaking, um, oh my God, it's just so cool. Look at this. Just look at this. It's just so beautiful for me. It's just so comforting. Um, yeah, that's it really. Okay, I better shut up and uh, turn off and go to sleep and and <laughs> get ready to do like a freaking, uh, well, freak, what is going on with my brain? There must be like some kind of neural um, hiccup. Um, yeah, there must be neural hiccups, aren't there? Um, um, yeah, I get to talk with my friends in a few hours about um, World War One and what they've been up to as well. Um, uh, Charles Latour. Oh my God, I got to see, well, for me, I'm sorry, Hex Encounter porn. I got to see um, his, uh, what is it, North Africa, 1942? Uh, I, sorry, I'm not into uh, dates and all that stuff for that those uh, that universe. Um, but holy cow, those counters, I don't know if it's changed, but they looked a hell of a lot better than uh, my Stalingrad one. I was like, like, I was extremely envious, but I will say this, um, I wanted to mention it in the live stream, but here I am. Um, I still think that level is too complex for my level of interest for that period and what I want to get out. Like, I still want to uh, um, scratch that desert uh, warfare 
World War II thing, but I, I think um, <laughs> I have to talk to Mandry Mike and say, recommend me an SBI game that you think I can deal with. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, bloody hell. And I got to um, uh, listen and watch some uh, Hizzy Cat stuff. Uh, that person has been um, relentless as far as I'm concerned. Um, relentless. Yeah, what a beautiful word, word eh? Used the right way. Oh, Jeepers jumping, and he certainly is. That's it. Um, yeah, okay. Better go turn the thing of the jig. I'm just uh, trying to figure out what the hell to do.